Okay, class. Good afternoon. So, we are still uh, discussing uh, relevant costing. So, we're done with the make, make or buy short-term decisions and also the special order decision. And for this session, so we are about to discuss uh, another type of short-term decision uh, faced by different uh, companies or different manage, uh, management on their day-to-day -day activities and that is yung number 38 in our handout and it's about uh, permanently dropping or maintaining a segment. So can you hear me class? Okay, so uh, let me read the problem. So ABC company currently operates, operates three departments. So we have D1, D2, and D3. The income statement of the company for the year ended March 2019 shows that D2 is making a loss as follows. So if you look at department D2, uh, this one, so as you can see, as you can see, uh, the performance of the department, uh, let so currently, uh, department 2 is operating at a loss. Okay. Yeah, so that is uh, department 2 uh, performance is loss of 31,000. So that's why the company or the ABC company would, uh, is considering dropping permanently department 2. So meaning they will stop the operation of department 2. Uh, however, uh, if we're going to uh, stop the operations of Department 2, uh, some revenues will uh, will be stopped also. Or, uh, for example, the gross margin or the contribution margin uh, generated from Department 2 will also stop. And aside, uh, so we have here the 80,000. Okay, so that is the 80,000 and and so that is a uh, decrease in income. So if we stop department to uh, department to operation, so uh, we will not anymore generate the 80,000 gross margin or contribution margin. Uh, but some of its fixed costs uh, will also stop, uh, especially the direct fixed costs. So if we have two types of fixed costs in the problem, so uh, remember, we have uh, two types of fixed costs. Uh, so we have the uh, direct fixed costs. So generally, if we're going to stop the operation of the department, uh, direct fixed costs will also uh, we will not uh, also incur any direct fixed costs. And another type of fixed costs. So meaning the effect of direct fixed costs if uh, this will decrease the operating income or the EBIT of the company will increase. And also, uh, aside from direct fixed costs, we also have the common fixed costs. And unfortunately, uh, walang effect yan dun sa dropping of the segment. So meaning, walang effect dito sa operating income. Unfortunately, yung mangyari dun sa uh, common fixed costs mo, the common fixed cost will be absorbed by the remaining departments. Kasi nga, uh, the common fixed cost will not uh, will not be affected of your decision of dropping dropping one of your segments. So therefore, uh, since that is an expense of the company, it will be absorbed by the other two departments. So what is relevant in this type of decision? Uh, Siyempre, una, uh, yung loss contribution margin. So I told you before, if we're going to drop department two, so we will uh, we will lose also this gross margin of eighty thousand or contribution margin of eighty thousand. And aside from the loss contribution margin, uh, another relevant is the uh, avoidable fixed cost. Generally, yung avoidable fixed cost will be coming from direct fixed cost. So the same concept will apply uh, just like what we have discussed from uh, our previous discussion in uh, 
special order keys no yung doon natin pag-usapan yung direct fixed cost and also the common fixed cost before so let's try to answer the problem unless you have question so yeah so it's making a loss as follows so we have department one department two department three so, so as you can see uh, actually the income statement format uh is uh it's look like absorption costing, but if you look at letter A, uh, so this is the All cost of sales are available, and all of the all cost of sales are variable, and all of the selling overheads in Department Two will be eliminated. Uh, medyo confusing yung given na operating costs because uh, head office overhead definitely is uh, common fixed cost. Because that is the overhead of head office and just being allocated to the departments. Uh, uh, given that long uh, operating cost. So it might be confused that selling and administrative might be a common fixed cost also, or it can be direct fixed cost. So very important yung uh, other information do sa problem. So babasahin na lang natin sila. Uh, Ayan, so Department 1 is uh, generating a profit of 30,000 while Department 3 is generating a profit of 90,000. So the total profit of the firm, this is number, check lang natin kung tama yung given, huh? number 38. So we have the income from Department 1 and that is 30,000. Department 2, that is negative 31,000 or loss of 31,000. And for Department 3, uh, this is 90,000. So if we add uh, all of these numbers, so that is 30 minus 31 plus 90. So the total profit of the firm is 89,000. So if we're going to drop D2, uh, most probably the... Uh, thinking of the management is that uh, since D2 is a burden on the company because uh, it eats uh, some of the revenue from the other departments, so they, they are thinking that if they're, if they're going to drop the department to the EBIT of the firm will increase. But uh, I told you before that it's not always the case because we need to look at the loss contribution margin and also the avoidable fixed cost. Ayan. So according to the problem, so the losses the department to made, the losses the department to made had lowered down the overall profit to 89. So we already checked this number. So we get the same amount. We have computed the same amount. 89,000. Company overall operating manager suggests that the department be closed uh, permanently. So, uh, because we still have one problem. So, yung temporary shutdown. So, that is a different case. So, the effect of the closure is studied and the following information is available. So, yung additional data. Say, naka-absorption cost. Siya, so, very important yung additional data. So according to the problem, all costs of sales are variable. So ayan. in case the income statement presented is uh, using absorption costing and the cost of sales comprise of uh, variable cost and fixed cost, you need to separate the cost of sales between the variable costing and absorption costing income statement. So yung katawan lang na for simplicity, uh, Absorption costing in presentation, but in reality, they are applying also the uh, variable costing. So, dapat, uh, I'm just saying that if uh, you're going to solve these type of problems or in relevant costing, the variable costing income statement format is what we should use. So, kung naka absorption siya, eh, di paghiwalay mo si fixed and variable. Ayan. And all of the selling overhead in Department 2 will be eliminated. So, yung selling overhead, so ito yan. So, itong 64,000 na to, these are uh, avoidable fixed costs. Ano ba yun? So, 
So this is avoidable fixed cost. Okay. Using ko lang. So avoidable fixed cost yan. Ayan. Uh, the sale in department one is expected to increase by 20%. Uh, okay, so because we are dropping department two, so some of our customer, uh, we are expecting that some of the customer from department two will buy uh, products from department one. So that's why we are expecting an increase of 20%. However, department three sales is expected to reduce by 5%. So most probably the product of product two, uh, sorry, the product of department two and department three are uh, related na or uh, in your economics that's accessory yata no complements so uh, meaning what they did, so some of the customers are thinking that the product of department to and that department three complements each other so they were going since they're not going to buy any more product from department two so therefore they were not also uh, going to buy product from department three so there will be an in decrease in sales from department three of five percent uh of course the additional five percent uh twenty percent sorry from department one is an increase in ebit while the decrease or while the five percent decrease the sales of department three is a decrease or will uh will be a decrease in operating income of the firm so the other departments will share the head office uh, overhead of the furniture department equally. The other departments, ah, okay, the head office department, okay, ito. So, yung office department to 64,000 since uh, this is a common fixed cost. Ito avoidable. So, common yan, kasi nga head office nga yan. So, if we're going to drop department 2, we will still incur the office the head office overhead and since we're dropping in department two uh the 64,000 will be divided in uh into department and department three Ayan. equally down so 64,000 divided by two. so only the 12,000 of the administrative cost in furniture department can be avoided and so can be avoided because the staff of the department will be transferred to department three so based on this statement i can conclude that the selling and administrative departments are direct fixed costs however out of uh 27,000, only 12,000 is uh, uh, avoidable in department two ay tama in department two Ayan, yung selling and admin overhead. The company will incur an additional cost to close down the department of 29,000. So this is additional loss of 29,000. So the question lang is, are we going to close the uh, department 2? So let's try to compute. So yun naman na tanong dyan. Kung i-ano doon natin si department 2. So Siyempre, yung alternative 1 natin, kasi we are comparing two alternatives, di ba? So, alternative 1, siyempre, uh, do not drop, di ba? Do not uh, drop department 2. If, so, if that is the case, the EBIT of the firm will still be 89,000. So, kapag hindi natin drain up si department 2, yung EBIT, 89,000. So, this 89,000 will uh, just need to compare to alternative 2. And that is to drop. That pala ginawa ko na to maintain. So, do not drop or maintain. Ito naman is to drop department 2. So, pag drain up natin si department 2, so, ano magkakaroon? So, first, we're going to have a loss contribution margin. This 80,000. So, siyempre, mawawala yung 80,000 na yan. So that is decrease in uh, operating income. So minus ako dito ng 80,000. So minus kasi nga uh, the effect of this 80,000, it will also, it will decrease our uh, EBIT if we drop department 2. So kaya siya uh, minus. So that's why it's negative. Number 2. So if we drop number 2, 
Ano ba ba yun? Ayan, yung selling overhead. So, dito na ako para mas madali. Punta na ako doon sa other information. So, sa letter A. Uh, Siyempre, pag drain up natin si Department 2, uh, mawawala yung sales. Mawawala na yung cost of sales. So, in effect, itong 80,000 yung mawawala. So, 80. Kaya ito na yung nilagay ko dito. 80. Ayan. Kasi sa A, eh, all cost of sales are variable. So, mawawala yung variable cost, which is good for us. Good yan. <clears throat> what else? Ayun. So, sabi niya, so, selling overhead in Department 2 will be eliminated. So, this one is avoidable fixed cost. So, since that is an expense, so, if we eliminate the expense, so, our operating profit uh, will increase. So, therefore, so, number 2, avoidable uh, fixed cost, which is uh, from selling department, so, 64,000 will be avoided. So, that is increase in profit. That's why we need to add uh, 64,000. 64,000. So, positive. Kasi nga, it will increase the EBIT of the firm, of the company. So, ayan. So, the sales in Department 1 is expected to increase by 20%. So, sa letter B tayo to. Sorry. Number three. Number big ito. Yeah. Number three. So we have uh, additional contribution margin from department one. Uh, why additional contribution margin? Because it's said that department one sales will increase, but if your sales will increase, your Cost of sale will also increase unless yung changes lang dun sa sales mo will be coming from the selling price. But this 20%, uh, ibig sabihin ng 20%, yung unit sales mo mag increase ng 20%. So if you're going to increase uh, the units, so your sales increase but your variable cost will also increase. So in effect, yung contribution margin or gross margin lang yung magiging uh, affected by such change. No? So, in 200,000, ano ito gagawin? So, 200,000, ibang multiply ko ng 20%. So, that will uh, give me additional 40,000 of contribution margin. So, this is positive kasi it will increase our uh, operating profit or EB. So, number four, uh, aside from additional uh, contribution margin of 20%, so uh, Department 3's contribution margin will reduce by uh, 5%. So contribution margin niya or contribution margin of Department 3, so contribution margin Department 3, so that is 200,000. So multiply ko siya na 5%, so that will give me 10,000. But this 10,000 should be negative because if the contribution margin of the department will decrease, your operating profit will also decrease. So, the effect of 10,000 is uh, decrease in your operating profit. So, yun yun da. so, we're done with letter B. Letter C naman, the department will share the head office. Ayan, so, yun sa letter C, so, wala tayong gagawin dyan. Kasi uh, not relevant yung 64,000. So whether you uh, choose uh, to maintain the segment or drop the segment, you will still incur the 64,000. So wala siyang effect. So walang effect. To. So we're done. So wala tayong gagawin dyan. Uh, letter D. So number 5. Sabi niya, only 12,000 of the administ administrative costs in furniture department can be avoided because the staff of the department will be transferred to department. So meaning out of 27,000, 12,000 is avoidable and 15,000 is unavoidable. So kasi maintain pa rin yun. So para lang siyang, yung 15,000 is just like head office overhead cost. Uh, these are all relevant costs. So what is relevant is the avoidable fixed cost. So we have uh, avoidable fixed cost, just like number two. Uh, 
but this is the administrative cost and that will be the 12,000 so only the 12,000 so this should be positive because avoidable cost yun. so therefore its effect is it will increase our operating income and lastly so number six Ayan, so number six, sabi niya, the company will incur an additional cost to close down the department that is 29,000. So yung effect ng 29,000 is that it will decrease our, uh, it will decrease our EBIT. So we have additional, uh, additional cost. Actually, this is relevant kasi future cost ko, di ba? So, I told you before, to make it relevant, it should be future cost and avoidable also. But it's avoidable. Eh, if you choose to maintain, you will not incur the 29,000. But if you choose to drop uh, the department, so we will incur the 29,000. So, we have here 29,000. Okay. So, this is minus because this is additional cost. So, yung total nito, yan. So, bali, negative 80,000 plus 64,000 plus 40,000 minus 10,000 plus 12,000 minus 29,000. So, this is negative 3,000. So, you cannot compare 3,000 against dito sa 89,000 from alternative 1. Because this 3,000, uh, this is negative. So, meaning this is the decrease in profit. If we drop uh, department 2, ayan. ito lang yung decrease. So, if we, we are being asked on what will be the operating income of the firm if we're going to drop department 2, so we need to add the 89,000. Kasi 89,000 before. Ayan 3,000, that is a decrease. So, 89,000 minus 3,000. So, 86,000. So, this will be the EBIT. If uh, department two uh, will be dropped, Ayan. will be dropped. Ayan. So yan yun. So ganon lang ka simple. Uh, kapag actually favorite ko talaga sa relevant costing yung dropping or maintaining the segment, kasi very logical naman yung uh, computation mo. So uh, what we need to do is just to look what are the avoidable revenue and avoidable cost so if yung avoidable revenue ang effect sa profit uh, decrease sa profit avoidable cost increase sa profit ayun ganun lang so dito ang decision syempre uh, using the analysis do not drop department 2 kasi yung revenue uh, decrease in revenue is higher than the increase in uh, decrease in revenue is higher than decrease in cost. Ayun. May question ba dun? Do you have any question, class? Nagets nyo ba yung diniscuss ko? Okay. May question, class? Do you have any question? So, sige, wala ah. So, madali na naman siya actually. No? Ayan, so, uh, key concept lang. So, tatandaan nyo lang kung uh, actually yung fixed cost lang nang papasok doon kasi nga uh, merong mga direct fixed cost at common fixed cost. So, if you can identify halimbawa kung binigay na dyan, direct fixed cost or common fixed cost, eh, di mas madali. Ngayon, pag hindi naka-specify if, if the fixed cost is direct or fixed cost. Minsan, gabitan mo yan ng logic. Siyempre, kapag, halimbawa, rent, office rent ng head office, for example. Siyempre, ano yun? Common fixed cost yun. So, kapag meron naman dyan, bilis ka lang dito sa additional information. So, if uh, if we're done with diba pa ganito? Drop or maintain segment. So, this is, take note, this is a permanent shutdown. So let's discuss another problem. So that is problem 39. Ngayon ba 'tong tanong? Ngayon malamit pala. 
Actually, binigay ko to sa quiz before. No? Gawa ko lang handout siya. So, this time naman, this is a temporary shop. Kaya alam ako, hindi ko na na-recheck kung meron pa yung what do you call this one? Uh, changes or updates. Pero, let's try to solve the problem. So, yung previously discussed, so, that is a permanent shutdown. So, meaning, if we're going to decide to drop Department 2, so, we're not we will not open again the operation of department 2. So, temporary shutdown naman, yun na, temporary. So, meaning, we're going to stop the operation of the department temporarily. Uh, bakit kaya? Eh, possible. Nibawa, uh, actually, napapanahon ngayon, diba? So, we are in the pandemic. So, instead that we're going to produce a... Uh, or if we're going to produce a product, so since stop yung operation, yung economy because of the pandemic, eh, nag-shut down din or nag-stop. So baka it's better not to operate uh, during the pandemic and just continue our operation after the pandemic. So parang ganun na temporary shutdown. Of course, ganun pa din yung story niyan. So there are some fixed costs that are avoid avoidable kasi direct fixed costs sila. And some fixed costs are not avoidable. No? Nibawa, if you are renting a place uh, to sell your inventory, to sell your product, so most probably the uh, rental expense is not avoidable. So, in yun. So, ang titignan lang lagi dito sa temporary shutdown, yung uh, avoidable fixed costs and also the not avoidable fixed costs. Ayan, tingnan natin. So, let's read the problem. Uh, ABC Corporation manufactures and sells a single product. Ito yan. So, at normal capacity uh, of 100,000 per annum. Take note, this is per annum. So, that's per year. The unit cost manufacturing the product. The unit cost of manufacturing the product is as follows. So, we have direct materials. That's 4.40. Direct labor, 5.6. Variable manufacturing overhead, 2.4. And fixed manufacturing overhead, uh, 4 pesos. Variable selling and administrative expenses, meaning other than. So, these costs are all product costs. Product costs yan. <clears throat> so, variable selling and administrative expenses amounts to 1.6 per unit. Daw. So, we have fixed selling and administrative costs are 80,000. Take note, this is also annually. 80,000 ulit yan. Ayan. Due to the increasing competition, the company expect to sell, to be able to sell only 4,000 per month. Ayan. So, 4,000 lang daw per month. Pero pag tinignan natin yan, yung sa original, so 100,000, kasi 100,000 units yung regular uh, sales niya, but this is per annum, so divided by 12, so that will be 100,000 divided by 12, so on the average, that will be 8,333.33 units, so kapag normal, 8,333.33 units yung nabibenta niya, however, because of uh, some events, so, they are expecting only to sell 4,000 per month. So, yun lang. And this 4,000 per month will continue for the next three months. Ayan. So, may pandemic din sila. So, lockdown sila for three months. And therefore, instead na 8,000 yung mabibenta, mabibenta nilang inventory, only 4,000 yung mabibenta nila. And take note, yung 4,000 units per month na yan, uh, i-reduce pa nila yung selling price for uh, 20, di ba? each. Yan. The company is reorganizing its operation to be able to regain competitive position. In the meantime, management is faced with the problem of whether to shut down temporarily. Yan. So, naisip na sila. So, they are thinking if they're going to shut down the operation temporarily. So, instead na they're going to sell 4,000 per month. So, they will not sell any product at all. So, yung ibig sabihin or continue limited operation at a loss during the three-month period. So, syempre, if they are not going to sell the 4,000 units, they are not going to sell 4,000 units uh, per month, 
uh, definitely they will incur loss kasi nga some of the fixed costs are unavoidable or common fixed costs so unavoidable yan so whether you operate or not operate you will still incur that fixed cost so maglolos ka ngayon pag nagbenta ka ng 4000 uh baka kasi itong 4000 na to this is uh this 4000 is below the break even point if that is the case whether you operate or not operate uh, the company will incur a loss Ngayon, kung ganun yung problem, parang ano na lang yan. So, they need to choose between the better evil, parang ganun. So, dun sa mas mababang loss, yung pipiliin ng firm. So, or the alternative that will give a lower loss, lower cost, uh, is the better alternative between the two. So, parang ganun. Yan yung logic lang. Dun. So, in the event of in the event of the shutdown, it is expected the fixed manufacturing cost will be reduced by ayan, so yung fixed manufacturing cost daw natin will be reduced by 60%, sabi niya. Ayan. So, meaning, yung 60% na yan, that will be your avoidable fixed cost. But take note, ha, uh, yung 60%, ah, uh, na lang. Ayan. And fixed selling and administrative expense will be reduced to, take note, this is to 10,000 for the three-month period. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, fixed selling and administrative will be reduced to 10,000 for the three-month period. So, yung 10,000 na yan, uh, that is the unavoidable fixed cost. So, yung difference is the avoidable fixed cost. Ayan, di na-specify if that is per month. Kasi based doon sa statement, parang for the three month na yan, yung 10,000. No? Additional cost of shutting, shutting down the plant for one year estimated to be 10,000. So itong additional shutting cost na to, or additional shutdown cost, ang tawag dyan. So that will be incurred only one time. So if they're going to operate again, they're going to operate again. Uh, they're going to operate again. They will incur that 10,000. No? Medyo napapatigil ako kasi parang may mga mali doon sa statement kasi. <laughs> Wala lang. Ayan. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, if they're going to operate or they will uh, resume the operation, they will incur this 10,000. Kasi, di ba... We're talking about three months period here. Eh. Pero ito, 10,000 na to, One time lang yan. One time lang may incur yan. And may incur mo lang yung 10,000 na to in case you choose to stop the operation. So, yun ang ibig sabihin. So, third uh, question dun, class. Do you have any question? Wala. Okay, so so they are yes, so for number 39 lang, so what should be the net advantage or disadvantage of the company if management decided to shut down? So we have uh, number 38 so for number 30, uh, 39 so number 39 Actually, ano ito? Madami. 39 to 42. 39 to 42. So, take note, this is temporary shutdown problem. Uh, we have two alternatives. So, alternative 1, uh, continue. Ayan. Alternative 2 is to uh, shut down the operation. So, syempre, for if we, uh, alternative one is to continue to operate. So, if that is the case, so meron tayong sales dyan. Kompetin uh, ko na lang yung contribution margin. So, ang selling price natin will be 20. So, diba? If we're going to operate, so we will have uh, 20 as selling price. However, we still have direct materials, which is 4.4 4 
So, yun. So, direct materials, direct labor. That's 5.6. Yan. Then, we have variable manufacturing overhead. This is 2.4. So, aside from the variable product cost, we also have the variable selling and admin. That is 1.6. So, therefore, our contribution margin will be 20 minus 4.4 minus 5.6 minus 2.4 minus 1.6. So, that will be 6 per unit. 6 per unit. Uh, according to the problem, yeah, so 6.4. 6 per unit, yung magiging contribution margin if we decided to operate. And our uh, units uh, to sell will be 4,000 units per month. And that is uh, per month. And we are going to operate for 3 months. So, 3 months. So, I'm going to multiply this 6 to 12,000. Kasi 4,000 times... 3 is 12,000. So, the total contribution margin expected is 12,000 times 6. So, that will be 72,000. Yeah, 72,000. However, they're going to operate. They will incur uh, fixed costs. So, we have fixed uh, manufacturing overhead. Kasi... So, yung uh, fixed manufacturing overhead, ito nalalagay. So, that will be 4 per unit. Diba? So, 4 per unit. So, yung multiply ko ng 100,000. But take note, this 100,000 is for one year. So, the total fixed manufacturing overhead is 400,000. So, I'm going to divide it by 12. 4 times 100,000 divided by 12. So, that will be... Uh, 33,333.33 per month. So, we're going to operate for 3 months. So, yung multiply ko yan ng 3. So, times 3. So, this will be 100,000. So, ito yung 100,000 natin for 3 months to. Yung fixed manufacturing overhead. So, minus ko dito yung 100,000. Siyempre, walang avoidable fixed cost. If the company will operate. So, I expense yung buong 100,000. So, aside from fixed manufacturing overhead, we also have the fixed uh, selling and admin expense. So, magkano yun? 80,000 annually, sabi niya. So, yung 80,000, di-divide ko ulit ng 12. So, that will be 80,000 divided by 12. So, this will be 6,667. Yeah, this is per month. Eh, multiply ko siya ng 3. Kasi for 3 months, uh, the company will operate for 3 months. So, that will be uh, 20,000. So, meron ako dito ang fixed selling and admin expense. Minus ako ng 20,000. Uh, wala naman na dyan. So, therefore, the EBIT, if we're going to operate for 3 months, that will be 72,000 minus 100,000 minus 20,000. So, magkakaroon tayo ng loss of 48,000. If we're going to operate. So, that's why they are thinking of shutting down temporarily. Kasi kapag nag-operate, loss naman tayo ng 48. Kapag hindi tayo nag-operate, uh, may loss din tayo. Kaya lang question, so alin yung mas mababa ang loss between the two alternatives? So, kaya natin pag usapan yun. So, syempre, if we're not going to operate temp, uh, for three months, syempre, wala tayong contribution margin. So, for, alter <coughs> for alternative two, that is zero. Ngayon, yung fixed manufacturing overhead, ano na sabi niya dyan? So, sabi niya dyan, uh, in the event of shutdown, ito ako, in the event of shutdown, it is expected that fixed manufacturing costs will be reduced by 60%. So, mababawasan daw ng 60%. So, meaning, kapag nag-shutdown tayo, 40% lang ng 100,000 yung magiging cost natin. So, magiging uh, 
So, 60,000 is the avoidable. So, yung unavoidable is the 40%. So, that will be uh, 40,000. So, ito yung 40,000, unavoidable yan. So, yung 40 na sa alternative 2, nandun din siya sa alternative 1. So, ang avoidable mo, yung difference yun ng dalawa, which is the 60,000. 60,000. So, lagay ko dito. 60,000. So, this is, ito yung difference. Higa siya kasi. Uh, difference. Ayan. So, 72 minus 0. So, minus ako dito ng 72,000. Kasi pag nawala yung CM, uh, decrease yung sa profit. So, mababawasan yung fixed manufacturing overhead. So, therefore, that uh, its effect, it, it will increase our profit. So, positive yung 60,000. So, sabi niya pa diyan, yung fixed selling and administ administrative will be reduced to 10,000. So, for the three-month period. So, assuming 10,000 na lang yung magiging uh, fixed selling and admin mo for the three-month period. Kasi for the three-month na eh, sabi niya. Hindi naman yung sinabi yung per month. Uh, so, 10,000 na lang siya. So, minus ako dito ng 10,000. So, therefore, ang avoidable natin is 10,000. Ah, sorry. Napalimutan ko pa. So, aside from the avoidable fixed cost, if we decided to stop the operation or to shut down temporarily, so that's alternative 2, uh, we we're going to incur uh, 10,000. So, itong additional shutdown cost na uh, 10,000. Ito yun. 10,000 na yan. And I told you before na ma-incur mo lang yan. One time lang yan. One time lang yung 10,000. So, if we decided to continue. So, minus ako dito ng 10,000 ulit. So, if that is the case, negative 40, uh, 10 minus 10. So, this is negative 60,000. Ayan. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, 10,000. So, minus ako dito ng 10,000. So, negative 72. Ah, dapat ang minus ko na lang. Plus 60,000 plus 10,000 minus 10,000. So, this is minus 12,000. Or, yung 48,000 minus 60. 12,000 pa din yun. So, ano yung ibig sabihin ng analysis natin? So, meaning, from this scenario, it's better for us to continue the operation. Kasi, if we're going to operate for 3 months, our loss will be uh, 48,000. But if we're going to shut down the operation, our loss will be 60,000. So, ang sagot dun sa number 39, what will be the net advantage to the company if the management decided to shut down? So, that will be negative 12,000 in favor of continuing the operation. May time ba dun? May tanong class? Okay, sige. Wala ah. Nag-usap ba ako? Nantayin nyo na yung record eh. Sige. Number 39 yun. Okay, number 40. So sabi niya, uh, what if the company can only sell 2,000 units ayan, per month for the next 3 months? Should the company continue or shut down? And how much will be the advantage. Ito hindi ko masyadong naitindihan. Bakit kailangan pa itanong yan? So, syempre, ang magbabago lang dyan, uh, yung computation natin for alternative 2 will be the same. Yun nga lang, uh, for alternative 1, syempre may iba siya. Ba't siya may iba? Kasi magbabago yung total contribution margin natin. Kasi before, that's 4,000 per month, but this time, only 2,000 per month. So, tingnan natin kung ano yung magiging effect. So, number when? That's number 40. So, number 40, so we have alternative 1, di ba? So, yung contribution margin will be 6 multiplied by 6,000 units. About 6,000 units. 2,000 times 3. So, 6 times 6,000 so, this will be 36,000. Ayan. So, we have fixed manufacturing overhead. That's 100,000. 
and also we have fixed selling and admin this is negative 20,000 so 36,000 minus 120,000 so our EBIT is negative 84,000 ayan ngayon compare natin yan dun sa alternative 2 so kaya pala siya tinanong so ang alternative 2 based in our previous computation syempre yung magbago yan so 60,000 siya so kung mas mababa dun sa 4,000 ito yung mamaya malaman natin na so, 84,000 minus negative 60,000. So, there is difference of uh, 24,000. But this time, this 24,000 is net advantage of uh, shutting down the operation temporarily. Sabihin, our decision, if we can only sell 2,000 units per month, it's better for us to just shut down the operation. Kasi pag nag-shut down tayo, our loss will be 60,000. But if we continue to operate, our loss is 84,000. So, i-shut down na lang natin yung operation. So, yun ang pinagkaiba dun sa number 39 and number 40. So, number 39, continue the operation, although net loss tayo. For number 40, shut down natin yung operation kasi mas mababa yung loss natin if we stop the operation of the firm. Ayun. So, number 41. Ah, okay. So, medyo mahirap yung 41. Number 41. So, ang tinatanong doon sa 41, what should be the decrease in fixed cost in order for the company's decisions to be indifferent? So, ibig sabihin, ano daw dapat yung fixed cost? Ah, uh, para maging indifferent daw yung decision sila. So, ibig sabihin yung indifferent, uh, yung magiging decision mo between alternative 1 and alternative 2 is the same. Ano ba? Ah, okay. So, ang tinatanong niya, what should be the decrease in fixed cost para maging indifferent ang magiging decision natin? No? Between alternative 1 and alternative 2. So, ang tinatanong niya is decrease in fixed cost natin. Ah, okay. E di, ang gagawin ko dyan, para kasi maging indifferent, dapat ang fixed cost natin is the same, di ba? So, we have negative 48,000 ito between alternative 1 and alternative 2. So, wait lang ha. Kasi, tinatang na naman, fix ko siya. So, this is 72,000. So, yung contribution margin, minus ko yung 100,000, minus ko yung 20,000, dapat equal yan dun sa, uh, ito, yung profit. Yung fix cost nila, na uh, x, ano ba yun? Uh, X plus 10,000. Kailang, wait lang. Ayan. So, bakit X plus? Uh, kasi yung X, yun yung fixed cost. Actually, hindi pa yun ang sagot, no? Kasi yung X na yun, yun yung magiging, ang tinatanong kasi decrease, eh. So, yun yung fixed cost plus yung shutdown cost na 10,000 na yun. So, ito yung shutdown cost, yung additional shutdown because ito yung 10,000. So, ito yan. Yun yung 10,000. So, ang hinahanap natin ito. Kasi para maging indifferent, dapat same silang dalawa. Ayan. Same silang dalawa. So, actually, dapat itong 72 minus 100 minus 20. So, magiging negative 48,000 na to. This will be equal to x plus 10,000. So, para matira yung x, Lipat ko si 10,000 sa kabila. So, magiging negative 48,000 minus 10,000 is equals to uh, x. Or x will be negative 50,000. So, dapat ang magiging fixed cost ko is 58,000 para sila maging indifferent. I take note. Ang fixed cost ko talaga is 120,000. So, minus 58,000. 
Yan. So, dapat ang decrease sa fixed cost ko will be 62,000. Dapat. No? Kasi itong 58, ito yung fixed cost mo para magkaroon ka ng income na 48,000. Yan ang ibig sabihin. Ayan. So, yung decrease, kasi tinatawag nyo dito is decrease. Eh. Ayan. So, it'll be the decrease in fixed cost. So, itong 58, ito yung fixed cost mo para maging indifferent. And this 62,000 will be the decrease in fixed cost. Kasi 120. Your fixed cost is 120,000. And your fixed cost and your fixed cost should be to have an income of 50, uh, 48,000. So 48,000 should be negative 58,000. So therefore, that should be 52,000. Ay, parang may mali sa liwa ko. Dapat negative to, sorry. So, this is negative 10, uh, x. This is negative. Ang mali. Negative x pa. Kasi expense yun. Sorry, baguhin ko lang. Mali. Should be negative kasi nga, fix cost tayo. So, minus din ako dito ng 10,000 ayan. So mali din ako kanina. So this is negative 48,000 is equals to negative x uh, negative 10k. So ipat ko sa kabila yung 10k sa so, negative 48,000. So magiging positive siya. So positive 10k is equals to negative x. So this will be negative 38,000 is equals to negative x. So in effect, negative negative siya so, magiging positive yan. So, dapat ang fixed cost natin is uh, 38,000 dapat. Ayan. Pero, yung 38,000 na yan, di pa yan yung sagot. Kasi ang hinihingi niya nga sa atin, yung decrease. So, kung 120,000 yung fixed cost natin, eh magiging 38 na lang siya. Tama naman yung 38, ako kundi pinahaba ko lang. Kasi, di ba, 48 dapat yung ibit. So, para maging 30, eh di dapat 48 din to. Itong 60, dapat 48. That is the case kung 48 at 10 yun. So, dapat 38 yung dalawa. Diba? Ginawa ko ng algebra. So, 120,000 minus 38,000. So, yung decrease sa fixed cost mo. 120 minus 38,000. So, that will be 82,000. Should be D, decrease on fixed cost. Or ito dapat yung magiging avoidable fixed cost natin. Para... Indifferent silang dalawa between alternative 1 and alternative 2. Assuming uh, kapag alternative 1, we will have a loss of 48,000. So, yun. May question ba dun? Question class. Naintindihan niyo ba yun? Oh, sige. Ayan. Ayan. So, 42. So, tinatanong sa atin yung shutdown point. Uh, shutdown point, actually, uh, this is the same with the indifferent point. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila for number 41, uh, ang tinatanong kasi dito, ang mag adjust o what should be adjusted is the fixed cost. No? Pero pagdating dito sa shutdown point, hindi yung fixed cost yung mag adjust Ang mag adjust yung number of units. So parang tinitingnan lang natin dito yung number of units to sell in order for us to break even. Ay, sorry. Uh, hindi pala break even. In order for us to be indifferent. Indifferent din yan. So ibig sabihin, for number 42, yung iba kasi, uh, ang tanong dyan sa problem is, what should be the number of units to sell in order for the company to be indifferent? So pareho lang yung indifferent dito sa number 41 tsaka 42. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila dyan, sa number 41, hindi yung number of units yung kukumpitin natin, kundi yung fixed cost. Kaya, if you notice dun sa computation, nag-base pa rin ako dito sa 48,000 na to. Assuming 4,000 pa rin yung mabibenta. Baka ako dun sa original. Ngayon, pagdating dito, sa number 42, indifference pa rin yung tanong. Indifference point, indifferent point pa rin yung tanong. However, hindi yung fixed cost yung i-adjust natin. Kasi, wala naman sinabi, tungkol dun sa fixed cost. Eh. 
So ang i-adjust na lang natin diyan yung shutdown point. Ay, sorry. Yung number of units to sell. So parang pabaliktad. So magbe-base ako dapat kasi from 48 to uh, alternative 2, from alternative 1 to alternative 2. But this time from alternative 2 to alternative 1. So dapat 60,000 ako ang loss ko sa alternative 2. Dapat 60,000 din yung magiging loss ko sa alternative 1 para maging indifferent sila. Ibig sabihin, kung 60,000 ang loss mo sa alternative 2 and 60,000 din ang loss mo for alternative 1. So therefore, whether you choose alternative 1 or alternative 2, hindi na siya magmamatter kasi nga indifferent sila. Wala ang pagkakaiba. So may formula dyan. Uh, yung shutdown point so take note, this is always in number of units. Uh, formula dyan, uh, yung total fixed cost minus shutdown cost, i-divide lang natin ng contribution margin per unit, syempre. Or, kung ayaw mo nyan, uh, itong avoidable fixed cost uh, minus yung sorry, uh, minus yung additional uh, shutdown cost. Yeah. So, ang pinagkaiba ng shut uh, divided by D, divided by the contribution margin per unit. So, syempre, yung total fixed cost dito, ito, yung tinutukoy na total fixed cost na yan, uh, combination yan, uh, that is a combination of the uh, common fixed cost, meaning yung allocated or unavoidable, tsaka yung avoidable fixed cost. Kaya if you notice, Yung total fixed cost, pag binawasan mo siya ng ah, asan? shutdown cost naman. So itong shutdown cost, ang formula naman ng shutdown cost is the common fixed cost plus additional shutdown cost. Ayan. So syempre, kung in natin yung uh, common fixed cost plus yung additional shutdown cost, minus ko doon sa total fixed cost. So ang matitira doon is the avoidable fixed cost lang. Yun lang yung matitira. Ayan. Diba? So, yun yung matitira dyan. Ayan. Ito naman, pag if you notice itong formula na to, yung adi, uh, avoidable fixed cost natin, syempre, kapag na-avoid natin yung fixed cost, magde-decrease yung fixed cost natin. So, it, this will be increasing income. Pero, yung minus ko yung additional shutdown cost. Bakit ko kailangan i-minus yung additional shutdown cost? Kasi yung shutdown cost, o yung additional shutdown cost is decreasing income naman. So itong uh, avoidable fixed cost, ang effect niya sa profit, it will increase the profit. Pero itong additional shutdown cost, it will decrease the profit. Kaya pag tinignan mo yun dito, ito yun eh. Itong 10,000 na to, uh, wala yan sa alternative 1, may incur mo lang yan sa alternative 2. At ang effect nitong 10,000 na to, it will decrease our profit. Kaya, Yung avoidable fixed cost, ang effect, it will decrease the profit. Kaya pag tinignan mo dito, <clears throat> ayan o, tinan mo itong 60 and 10, positive sila. Kasi it will uh, increase the profit. So kumbaga, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> ang kinukuha lang talaga natin dun sa formula ngayon, itong 60 plus 10 minus 10,000 na ito. Ito lang yun, nasa formula. So, avoidable fixed cost, net of additional shutdown cost. Kasi nga, but in a net, eh yung uh, additional shutdown cost mo, ang effect niya sa profit, it will decrease your profit. Maybe sabihin. Tapos, i-divide ko dun sa <coughs> contribution margin per unit. Which is 6 yun. Ayan. Tingnan natin. So, using this formula, shutdown point, this will be uh, avoidable fixed cost minus uh, shutdown, uh, additional shutdown cost. Take note, uh, additional, hindi yung shutdown cost. Kasi pag sinabi mo shutdown cost, uh, yun yung unavoidable. <coughs> yun yung unavoidable plus yung additional shutdown cost. I-divide ko ito ng uh, contribution margin per unit. 
So yung additional fixed cost natin, ito, avoidable fixed cost, sorry. Umpit ko na kakalina yan. So that will be 60 plus 10,000. So bali, 60,000 plus uh, 10,000. So ito yan. Ito. Minus ko yung additional shutdown ko. So that will be 10,000. I-divide natin ng 6. So if you notice, uh, bali, 60,000 na lang. So this will be 60,000. I-divide ko ng 6. 60,000 divided by 6. So, this will be uh, 10,000 units. So, ibig sabihin at 10,000 units, indifferent tayo. Whether we choose to uh, alternative one, which is to continue operate and not to continue to operate. But take note, itong 10,000 na to, this is for 3 months already. Huh? Kasi yung fixed cost na ginamit ko dyan, itong 60 tsaka 10 na to, this is also for uh, 3 months. Kaya yung makukuha kong sagot na uh, units, for example, itong 10,000 units na na to, this is good for 3 months already. For 3 months na yan. Dapat ang mabibenta mo uh, for the year is, and for the next 3 months, at least 10,000 para in difference ka uh, between alternative 1 and alternative 2. So kung 10,000 yung mabibenta mo for 3 months, ibig sabihin, kahit alimpiriin mo, mag-operate ka or wag kang mag Operate. Kasi same lang naman sila. So, check natin. So, alternative 1. Diba? So, we have alternative 2. Kunan natin kung tama tayo. Sana tama. So, kapag alternative 1, so, we are going to sell 10,000 units. So, ito times ko ng 60 yan. So, contribution margin ko will be uh, 60,000. Pero meron akong fixed manufacturing overhead. Uh, this is 100,000. Oh, saan nakuha yung 100,000? Ito yan. Ayun. And we have the fixed fix selling and admin expense which is 20,000. Ayan. So pag tinignan mo to, ang ibit natin dito is 60,000. Uh, this is negative. So, 60 minus 100 minus 20, negative 60,000. Ngayon, sa alternative 2, o, oh, ba merong fixed manufacturing overhead. Ito yan eh. Ayan o, oh, 40,000. So, meron siyang 40,000 dito. 40,000. Tapos, yung fixed selling in admin is 10,000. Plus, meron siyang additional shutdown cost which is 10,000. So, in effect, uh, 60,000 din to. Kaya siya indifferent ang tawag. Kasi equal yung magiging loss natin kapag nakabenta tayo ng 10,000. So, ngayon, what will be your decision? So, to summarize lang. Pansinin mo yung problem number, yung first computation natin. So, number 39. So, sa number 39, di ba? Number 39, yung units natin to sell uh, is 12,000. So, mas mataas yan dun sa 10,000 na shutdown point. Kasi, uh, indifference tayo eh. Kapag 10,000 units lang yung nabenta natin for 3 months. Eh, ang mabibenta dun sa number 39, 12,000. Kasi, mas mataas dun sa 10,000. If that is the case, anong decision natin dun sa number 39? Balikan natin. Number 39. Uh, continue operation. ba? Continue operation tayo. Kasi yung loss natin, bababa. From 60,000, 48,000 na lang. If we operate and we can sell 12,000 units. Kaya ang decision mo, uh, continue. Ayan, continue the operation. Pero dun sa number 30, saan ba yan? 40 ba yan? May 2,000. Ito, yung number 40. Tinan mo to. Uh, that is 6,000 na lang, di ba? Ito, 6,000 units. So, ang mabibenta mo, number 40, ha? So, from, from number 40, ang mabibenta natin is 6,000. So, mas mababa dito sa 10,000 na shutdown point. So, therefore, if you look at our computation to sa number 40, 
Ano decision natin? To shut down. Ayan. So, ang decision dito, shut down. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? So, ang basis natin will be the shutdown point. So, kapag mas mataas doon sa shutdown point, continue the operation. Kapag mas mababa, uh, discontinue the operation temporarily. Ayan. So, yun lang. Eh, what if uh, 10,000, same sila? Diba? So, equal. So, shutdown point mo, 10,000. Ang mabibenta mo, 10,000. So, kahit alim piliin mo, alternative one, continue or not to continue, the same lang naman yung magiging effect na sa profit natin. Kaya lang, as a manager, what are you, what will be your decision? So, kung ako yung tatanungin dyan, continue the operation, kahit na net loss ka. Kasi, bakit continue? Eh, kapag kasi nag-continue ka ng operation, yung employee mo, magkakaroon pa rin sila ng profit kasi papasweldoin mo pa rin sila. So, may direct uh, labor cost ka pa din. Although, hindi ka naman nalugi. Kasi yung lugi mo, kapag nag-shutdown ka, will be the same. O, same lang na lugi mo kapag nag-continue ka sa operation. Pero at least, nakatulong ka sa ibang kapwa mo. Parang na rin. So, kaya mag-continue na lang tayo na operation. Kahit na indifference tayo. O indifference between the two alternatives. May question ba dun sa temporary shutdown? Wala. Naintindihan naman. Okay, sige. Sige. Ngayon, so since natapos na tayo dito, yung mga next question kasi, next problem kasi madadali na ito. So tapusin na natin ito. No? Ganito na lang yata. Okay, so another uh, short-term decisions. Ako ni galing to sa quiz ko before. Quiz ko yan. Kaya natawa ako kalina. So dito sa 43 and 44. So ako ni madali lang to. Ito yung pinakamadali. Sell or process further lang siya. So uh, if you remember, this is the same problem you encounter dun sa joint and by products you have discussed in cost accounting. Kaya lang, ang focus of the discussion during the cost accounting is the allocation of joint costs, di ba? Uh, the allocation of joint costs. However, yung joint cost mo, uh, di ba remember, uh, kung naalala mo yan, sa joint process na tinatawag, uh, alimbawa, ito yung tinatawag natin na joint process. Dito sa period na to, you will incur direct materials, direct labor, and uh, factory overhead. Ngayon, sorry, meron point in this process na naghihiwa-hiwala yung inventory mo o yung joint products mo. Diba? So, magkakaroon ka ng product A, product B, product C. So, this point in the production process, ang tawag natin dito, is split of point, di ba? If you remember. So, this is split of point. So, alimbawa, for example, uh, product natin, example sa book, is meat product. So, chicken. So, yung A is uh, chicken legs, chicken wings, and chicken breast. Parang ganun. So, A, B. And ngayon, raw meat yan. So, A, B, C are all raw meat. So, pwede mong gawing to sino yan. Kaya, magde-decide ka if we're going to sell uh, the joint uh, products, itong ito, ABC. Take note, this is raw product. Raw sila. Or are we going to process further? So, pag pinasas further natin yan, si A, magiging A1, for example. So, ito, tosino na yan. Tosino. Yan. Si B, alimbawa, uh, magiging longganisa. Hindi ko lang kung may ganun. C, etc. Parang ganun. So, ang pinag-usapan na lang natin dito sa relevant costing, yung decision mo, whether to process further or not to process further. So if you notice from the timeline, itong direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead, ang tawag ko dito is joint cost. Ayan. So itong joint cost na to, dun sa decision natin, whether to process further, itong A, B, C, into A1, B1, and C1, are not relevant. Not relevant na yan. Bakit not relevant? Eh kasi, uh, our decision to process further 
the product ABC will not be affected by this joint cost. Kasi na-incur mo na yung joint cost eh. Bago ka pa mag-decide kung ipaprocess mo further si A, B, and C. So si joint cost mo, sunk cost na. Diba? Doon sa decision, sa type sa type ng decision natin, whether to process further or not to process further, joint cost is not any more relevant kasi sunk cost na yan. Kung i-process mo pa siya further or not to process further, na-incur mo na yung joint cost, which is comprised of direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. So hindi na siya uh, important for us. So what will be important in this type of decision will be the additional income. Bakit magkakaroon ng additional income? Eh kasi, pag binenta ko yung panang manok o yung chicken leg, magbenta ko lang halimbawa ng, halimbawa lang, hindi ko kasi alam, 100 per kilo. Pag ginawa mo siya to sino, magiging 200 na siya. So, tumaas yung selling price from 100 to 200. So, what will be important is the additional income from additional sales. Kasi nagiging yung selling price mo. Yan. But definitely, there will be an additional cost. Why? Why there will be an additional cost? Eh kasi, yung raw meat, gagawin natin to sino. So therefore, there, we will incur additional direct materials, additional direct labor, and additional uh, overhead. Kasi di ba gagawin mo to sino yun? So definitely, mayroong uh, ano ba? food coloring, uh, uh, ingredients, etc. So yun lang yung maging important. Pero itong joint cost mo, hindi na siya important. Parang gano'n. So ang gagawin lang natin dyan, this is, uh, take now, sell or uh, process further, ayan, decision, uh, sulat ko. So, syempre, we have additional revenue. So, parang ang computation lang natin dyan is, uh, ano ba, additional ba? Gawin ko na lang na incremental revenue. Minus lang yung incremental cost uh, so that we can have incremental profit. Yan. So, yung incremental revenue, di ba? Ano yan? Uh, sales, uh, kapag pre-nasses further, minus sales, uh, if not, process further. Yan. So, Pag ginawa natin yung difference nitang dalawa, yun yung incremental revenue. So, yung minus natin yan doon sa incremental cost. Ano incremental cost? That will be uh, total cost minus yung additional processing cost. Na yung total cost, this is uh, joint cost plus additional processing cost. Siyempre, pag minus natin yan, ayan, no, total cost, pag combination nilang dalawa, Ay, sorry. Mali pala yung formula ko. Hindi pala ito. Oops, nagahang. Kasi total cost minus additional processing cost. Ang matitira, joint cost. Eh, dapat ang matira dyan is the uh, additional processing cost. So, total cost minus... Oops, wala. Yun lang. Tay, wait lang. Tidya niyo ba discuss ko? Baka may tanong class habang naghang. Ayan, so... Ayan nga. So, ito ang akto ni Mali. So, total cost uh, minus yung joint cost. Ito kasi yung additional processing cost. So, pag binayos natin yung total cost minus joint cost, uh, ito na yung incremental cost. So, madaling salita, yung incremental cost mo will be equal dun sa additional processing cost. So, kapag mas mataas yung addition incremental revenue kaysa incremental cost, we have incremental profit. 
Para mas maintindihan, tingnan natin yung next problem. <clears throat> Ito. 43 and 44. Buray ko muna. Okay, so ABC Fast Food Company has been producing uh, burgers for a number of years now. So, a regular burger can only be sold at 100 uh, or it can be further processed into a cheeseburger which sells for 150. So kapag hindi natin pre-process yung burger natin, uh, mabenta natin 100. Kapag pre-process further, mabenta natin siya ng 150 kapag cheeseburger. So kung cheeseburger siya, take note, we have uh, three products yata eh. Pinsa man. Ayan, so 150 pag cheeseburger, pag supreme burger 180, pag bacon burger 240. So mas mataas yung selling price but definitely mas mataas yung cost kasi yung cheeseburger lalagyan mo ng cheese. Supreme burger baka lalagyan ng gulay, I'm not sure. Pag famous bacon supreme burger lalagyan mo ng cheese, lalagyan mo ng gulay, lalagyan mo rin ng bacon. So, yung regular burger can be produced at a total per unit cost of 80. So, yung regular burger, uh, 80 daw yung additional cost. So, itong 80 na to, ito yung joint cost. Kasi whether you uh, sell uh, regular burger, cheeseburger, supreme burger, uh, bacon supreme burger, pare-pareho yung basic ingredients niya eh. May patty, may bread, di ba? Eh, siyempre, yung patty, tsaka yung uh, burger patty, tsaka yung bread. Eh, pare-pareho lang naman sila. Diyadagdagan mo lang yung ingredients. So, common to all yan. So, whether you process further or not process further, na-incur mo yung 80. So, yung 80 na yan, joint cost yan, and it's not relevant anymore. Not relevant. So, what will be relevant? Itong 40, 120, tsaka 90 na to. Ayan. So, sabi niya, by how much was the company losing for further processing and uh, profitable product line? So, take note. Tingnan muna natin bago natin sagutan yan. So, let's try to uh, determine uh, whether or which of the product should be processed further. So, paano ang gagawin yun? So, we have three products. Diba? Cheeseburger. Supreme Burger. Bacon Supreme Milk. So, tingnan natin kung paprocess natin further yan. So, we have the final selling price. Lagay ko na lang final selling price. Ibig sabihin, pag paninasas further, so yung ordinary burger, ginawa mong cheeseburger, yun yung final selling price nila. So, this will be 150, 180, and 240. Yan. Ngayon, we have the uh, regular selling price. Ibig sabihin, kapag hindi sila pre-nasas further, and that will be 100. So, 100 ito. Yeah. So, therefore, ito yung incremental revenue, which is just the difference between the final selling price and the regular selling price. So, yung incremental revenue natin per unit. So, this is 50. Uh, this is 80, this is 140. Yeah. Ngayon, meron tayong additional processing cost. So, additional processing cost, ito, uh, that will be 40, uh, 120, and 90. So, ibig sabihin, pag minus ko incremental revenue at additional processing cost. Take note, it, sabi ko kanina, itong additional processing cost will be your incremental cost already. Kasi, <clears throat> kasi paano ba nakumpit yung 40 na yan? Yung total cost, anong total cost mo? 80 plus 40, for example. So, this is 120 minus 80. Ano yung 80? Ito yung joint cost, di ba? So, 120 minus 80, 40 yun. So, this is uh, 120 plus 80. This is 200 
plus 80, that's 120. Ayan. Tapos, uh, 90. this is 170 minus 80, uh, that's 90. Kaya, itong additional processing cost, ito na incremental cost mo. So, ito yung total uh, total cost minus yung uh, joint cost. Diba? Kaya, pag tignan mo, pare-pareho yan. Eh. Common cost. Eh. Tige, iti sila. So, pag binawas ko yung uh, additional processing cost sa incremental revenue, so makocompute natin yung incremental profit or incremental loss. Paano gabi nyo? 50 minus 40. 50 minus 40. This is 10. So meron tayong incremental profit for cheeseburger. 80 minus 120. This is negative. Uh, 40. Ibig sabihin, uh, meron tayong incremental uh, loss. Ibig sabihin, pag prinasas natin further into uh, burger yun. So, print burger, malilugi tayo ng 40 per unit. Or, uh, hindi tayo malilugi. Uh, our profit will decrease. If we process further, our profit will decrease by 40 per unit. And lastly, 140 minus 90. So, this will be 50. Ibig sabihin. Yan. So, magkakaroon tayo ng additional profit na 50. So, if we have an incremental profit, so therefore, our decision is to process further. So, in this example, so yung ipaprocess further natin will be cheeseburger and burger supreme, bacon supreme, milk. Yata. Tama ba yun? O, oh, yun. Bacon supreme, milk. Yeah. So, Silang dalawa lang yung dapat i-process further. Kasi, kapag pre-process further, magkakaroon tayo ng additional 10 per unit doon sa cheeseburger and 50 per unit kay Bacon Supreme uh, Melt. Si Supreme Bacon, Supreme Burger, sorry, uh, pag pre-process further siya, yung income natin, bababa. Hindi ibig sabihin ba tayong income. Bababa lang yung income natin. Hindi ibig sabihin. Ayan, so 40. Sabi tanong niya, by how much was the company losing for further processing unprofitable product line? So, pag pre-process natin si Supreme Burger, so, after ito na yun, number 43. Ayan. Kasi sabi, tanong ni, uh, gano daw kalaki yung mawawala sa atin kapag pre daw natin further yung unprofitable product line and the unprofitable product line si Supreme Burger. So, 40 yun per unit. So, multiply ko ng ilang unit yun. 3,000. Ayan. So, 40 times 3,000. So, 120,000 yung bababa. Dun sa profit natin. Uh, decrease. Take note ha. Hindi ito yung profit. Ito lang yung magiging decrease dun sa profit natin. Ngayon, uh, para mas maintindihan, tingnan mo ito. ba? Ano ba gagawin ko? Ah, okay. So, halimbawa, assuming lang, ito lang muna tayo para mas to simplify lang the discussion or the computation. Kung hindi natin ipaprocess si uh, Supreme Burger, magkano yung selling price ko sa kanya? 100, di ba? 100. Ang cost ko, 80. So, minus 80. So, 20 yan. Pag minultiply ko ng 3,000, so, meron na akong profit na 60,000. Ayan. 60,000. Ngayon, ipaprocess ko siya further. So, pag pre ko siya further, magkano na yung magiging uh, selling price? 180. Ayan. Magkano na yung magiging cost ko? Hindi itong 120 kasi additional lang yan. So, may cost siya na 80 kasi nga yung burger patty tsaka yung bun. So, 200 talaga yung cost ko. So, minus 200. Ayan. So, lugi ako ng 20 na per unit. Di ba? 20. Tama ba? 180. Ah, tama. 180 minus 200. So, negative 20. Ita-times ko ng 3,000. 
So, lalabas, ang magiging income ko na is negative 60,000. Dati may kita ako na 60. Ngayon, lugi na ako ng 60,000. So, question. Magkano yung dinikris dun sa profit ko? Ang sagot, 120. Kasi 60,000 minus negative 60,000. So, this is uh, 60,000 minus negative 60,000. Ayan. So, that will be 100. 20,000. Ayan. Kasi pag 60,000 lang, dapat zero yun. Dapat, instead na negative 60, zero dapat yun. Ikaso e negative 65. So, ibig sabihin, ang ibinaba ng profit natin is 120,000. Which is, na-compute natin kanina, yung 40, minultiply ko na 3,000. So, 120,000. Kaya, 120,000 ang sagot dito sa number 43. Question. May tanong ba dun? Ang matapos na tayo. Okay, sige. Okay, so, uh, number 44. If the unprofitable product line will be dropped and all unit sales for such will be transferred. If the unprofitable product line will be dropped and all unit sales for such will be transferred to the most profitable product line. Ah, okay, iba pala to number 44. So, ibig sabihin, since profitable si Supreme Burger, uh, hindi na daw natin siya ipaprocess or we're not going to sell any more Supreme Burger. Ngayon ang naisip ko dyan, baka ordinary burger na lang. Kaya lang di eh. Ang sabi niya dyan, and all unit sales for from Supreme Burger will be transferred to the most profitable product line. Which is in this case, ito yun, C, uh, burger Supreme Melt. Siya yung pinaka-profitable kasi mas mataas yung additional pag pinasas natin siya further. Ano ba sabi niya? Ayan. By how much would the company's net income increase or decrease? So, if that is the case, uh, di ba? Number yan. Wait. Number 44. Ayan. So, ang tinatanong naman niya kasi increase or decrease lang. So, pwede na ako mag-base dito lang. Sa 10 tsaka sa 50. So, sa cheeseburger, mayroon siyang additional na profit na 10. So, ilang units siya? That will be 5,000. So, 10 times 5,000 units. So, parang 50,000 yata. ba? So, this will be give us 50,000 units, ah, 50,000 pesos. Take note, ah, this is increase. Increase yan, ha? Hindi ito yung profit. Tataas lang yung profit mo ng 50,000. Ngayon, yung Burger Supreme Melt, that is 50. 50. Imamultiply ko siya ng uh, magkano to? 2,000 plus 3. So, 5,000. So, times 5,000 units. Ayan. So, 5,000 times 50, that is 250,000. So, increase ulit yan. So, ang total increase natin is 300,000. Ayan. So, ito yung magiging total increase. E, para pag tinanong ka, what will be the EBIT of the firm? If we process further, the cheeseburger, tsaka Ito. So, pag tinanong ka, what will be our new EBIT? Ito yung tanong sa'yo. E di syempre, kung kumpitin natin yun, kasi same lang naman yung price, di ba? So, that will be 100 minus 80. 100 minus 80. So, 20. 20 times uh, 10,000. So, ito kasi yung magiging ibit mo pag di mo prinasas further. So, 20 times 10,000 units. So, that will be 200,000. Ayan. So, ito yung ibit. If not, process further. Ngayon, meron tayong increase. If process further, si cheeseburger and si burger supreme milk which is 300,000. Kaya, 
ang magiging EBIT if uh, process further si cheeseburger and burger supreme milk is uh, will be 500,000. Ayun. Kasi ito increase lang ito. Tayo pinakamadali 'yon. So question. Nagets ba class? Next one. Okay, sige. Okay, so last problem. Yes, tapos na tayo. Uh, eto, so last problem natin, yung 45, 46 to 47. So this problem is about a firm with limited uh, resources. Sa ibang book, tawag yan, scarce resources, di ba? Kasi according to your economics, yung resources talaga is ano, limited. E unlimited yung wants natin. So, yun ang story niyan. So, ngayon, if the company have only one, tawag dito bottleneck eh. Kasi yung resources mo is a bottleneck of the firm. Meaning, di ba yung battle? So, dahil masikip yung uh, openings ng battle, yun lamang sa loob, di lumalabas ka agad-agad. Mabagal yung paglabas. So, ganun din yan. Uh, if the firms have uh, one limited resources so isa lang yung nagiging cost ng scarcity uh, we can uh, arrive at a decision by computing for the contribution margin per limited resources yan lang so yan lang yung pinaka importante din so Usually naman, sa problem, uh, there is only one limited resources lang provided. Kasi kapag more than one, yung limited resources, medyo mas mahirap yung computation. You cannot use anymore the contribution margin per limited resources formula kapag more than one. So kapag, uh, ano ba yun? More than one limited resources, Uh, hindi na pwedeng gamitin yan. Ang gagamitin na natin is yung uh, linear programming na. Linear programming method na. So if you remember, uh, graphical. Graphical approach. Uh, actually, pwede lang yan kapag 2. Pero kapag more than 2, nagamitan mo na siya ng simplex, simplex method. Huwag naalala niyo yung simplex. Kaya lang din na natin i-discuss yung uh, graphical, tsaka yung simplex method. Dito tayo mag-focus kasi na-discuss nyo na to sa management science. Eh. So, yun lang logic. Kaya, if you look at the handout, uh, ito, nagbigay ako dito ng actually, ayan, no? yung graphical method. Kasi, yung handout na to actually, uh, was provided dun sa IAC na, sa integrated accounting na. So, sa integrated accounting, dinidiscuss ko pa yung Uh, graphical method ng linear programming. Pero sa inyo, hindi na. So, kapag one limited resources lang, ito lang gagamitin natin. Contribution margin per limited resources. So, depende rin sa firm. So, if what is there, limited resources. So, depende rin sa problem. Pero ganyan na yung logic. So, syempre, uh, we're going to prioritize the product that will provide a higher contribution margin per limited resources. Ibig sabihin, matas yung contribution margin niya eh on per limited resources basis. So, therefore, siya yung ipaprioritize natin. Yan yung sabi. So, tingnan natin yung problem para ma-apply natin yung logic. So, sabi niya, ABC company is a small family business that produces wooden plaques and trophies. So, ito yung data. So, for uh, plaque, plaque uh, selling price is 18, trophies 15, variable cost is 12, and 8. So, therefore, yung contribution margin is 6 and 7. So, 18 minus 12, uh, 6, 15 minus 8, that's 7. So, yun. <clears throat> so, the company only machine a sander and used to and the wood that is used for the plaques or the trophies. Huh? O, oh, sige. Basta ang ibig sabihin niyan, yung machine daw ginagamit doon sa wood na ginagamit sa trophies sa plaque. Generally, the wood required 
for each blockade takes 0.25 hour to sand, while the wood required for each trophy takes about 0.5 hour to sand. So, ibig sabihin, ang limited resources natin for this problem is the machine. Kasi isa lang machine mo eh. Oh, you only have one machine for uh, plaques and trophies. So, therefore, ang tanong, alin yung ipaprioritize natin na paggagamitan ng machine? Is it is the plaques or the trophies? Ayan. So, sabi niya, oh, tingnan mo yung number 45. Sabi niya sa 45. If the variable, uh, if the available machine hours are 100, so 100 hours lang daw, and there were no market limitation on both products. So, pag sinabing walang market limitations, kahit gano'ng karaming uh, plaque or uh, trophies, pwede natin mabenta. So, what will be the maximum profit that the company can earn given the same constraints? So, tingnan muna natin kasi na ipaprioritize sa dalawa. So, this is number 45 to uh, 47. So, una, so let's try to determine which among the products should be prioritized assuming that we have uh, limited resources and our limited resources is the number of machine hours. We only have 100 hours in this example. So, we have yung product A, yung plak A, and we have trophies. So, yung contribution margin natin is 6 and this is 7. Sabi ko, uh, in this type of problem, so since we only have one limited resources, ito lang gagamitin natin. Yung contribution margin per limited resources. Uh, ang limited resources natin is 0.25. Uh, buti na lang per hour pareho. Siyempre kung hindi, dapat, halimbawa uh, yung isa per minute, yung isa per hour. So yung per minute, kung convert mo into per hour. So parang mas maganda. So, since pareho naman sila, so walang problema. So, ano to? <clears throat> ah, okay. Okay, so yung first product, this is 0.25. So, ito yung limited resources ko. This is 0.25 hours. Si Tropi naman, this is 0.5 hours. So, ito yung contribution margin per resources. So, di-divide ko lang. So, 6, di-divide ko ng 0.25. So, meron na kong uh, 24 pesos uh, per limited resources for uh, the first product. Ngayon, 7 divided by 0.5. Meron akong 14 uh, pesos per limited resources naman kay uh, ito kasing 6 at 7 per unit ito. So, itong 24 at 14 per limited resources which is the number of hours actually. So, if that is the case, mas mataas yung contribution margin ko per limited yung resources kay Plaki kesa kay Trophy. Kay Trophy kasi 14. So, ang priority natin si uh, Play. Yan, 24. Yan. Sabi niya, doon sa number 45, if the total available machine hours are 100 and there will be, there were no market limitation, what will be the maximum profit that the company can earn given the said constraints? So, kung uh, Baka malalaman yan. So, una, so, ang pwede kong gawin dyan, uh, actually, pwede rin yung isa. Uh, sige, try ko lang to. So, kung 100 yung hours natin, total machine hours, 100 hours to, machine hours, e di ba, uh, kada inventory, kasi pa-prioritize ko si, uh, ito eh, si Plaki, 0.25 siya. So, i-divide ko itong I-divide ko ito ng 0.25. So, one, parang 4 lang yan. Divided by 0.25. Uh, this is 400. This is 400. Ano to? 400 units yan. So, ita times ko ng 6. So, ibig sabihin, out of this 100 machine hours, kung 0.25 per unit, uh, yung na-incur ko na machine hours. So, 400 units yung total na mapoproduce ko. Eh kung 6 per units, yung contribution margin ko. So, times 6. So, lalabas, meron akong 2,400. Kahit laki yan. Ngayon, tingnan mo to. Kung si Tropis yung gagawin ko, eh, 100 yung machine hours ko. Machine hours. 
eh, 0.5 yung kailangan niya. So therefore, this is 200 units. So 100 divided by 0.5. So this is 200 units lang. Imumultiply ko ng contribution margin. This is 7. O 1, 4. So magiging contribution margin ko is 1, 4 lang. Kapag tropis. Kaya, uh, itong 2,400, syempre, ipaprioritize mo si Plucky kasi mas mataas yung contribution margin niya kaysa dito kay tropis na 1, 4 lang. Ayan. Ngayon yung 2, 4, pwede ko rin makompute to kasi itong 6 nakabisa units ito eh. Contribution margin per unit. So, pwede ka rin makumpit yung 2,400. Magbibase ako dito sa 24 na limited uh, contribution margin per limited resources. So, that will be 24 times 100, unit, uh, 100 hours. So, lalabas pa rin yung 2,400. So, kahit alam sa dalawa, pwede ako magbase. Ayun. So, ito yung number. Oops, nagamit. Wala. Ayan. So, that will be our answer for number 45. So, yung ginawa ko. So, first, uh, kinumpit ko yung contribution margin per limited resources. Per limited resources so that I can identify which among the products should be prioritized in the production. So, since there is no market limitation, so hindi na tayo magpo-produce ng tropis, so puro plaki na lang yung ipo-produce ng firm since mas mataas yung effect niya o mas mataas yung contribution margin na it can provide. So, 2,400 niya ang magiging contribution margin natin. Nag-gets ba yun? Question class. Okay. So, kung wala, number 46 tayo. So, this time sa 46, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng market limitation sa so number 46. So, sabi niya, posing daw that the maximum number of plaques that can be sold each period is only 200 units. Kasi if you notice, dito sa computation natin, 400 units eh, yung mabibenta natin na Plaque, di ba? Para magkaroon tayo ng 2,400. But this time, we cannot sell 400 units. Only 200 units daw. What will be the maximum profit that the company can earn given the said constraints? So, kung 200 units yung ipoproduce ko, di ba? Eh, each unit will incur uh, 25 machine hours. 0.25 machine hours. So, yung multiply ko to ng point 25. So, parang 50 yan. 200 times 0.25. O, oh, di ba? 50 machine hours. Ayan. So, 50 machine hours yung main care ko. So, ibig sabihin, meron pa akong available uh, na 50 machine hours for tropies. Kasi itong 50 na to, this is for plucking. Ayan. So, 50. Para yung total ko na 100 machine hours na available. Ayan. So, ang tinatanong lang, ano daw yung magiging profit natin? So, sa, sa plaque, meron akong 200 units. Imumultiply ko ng contribution margin per unit and that is 6. So, 200 times 6. So, that will give me 1,200. So, since meron akong extra 50 machine hours for tropies, uh, E di mag-produce ako ng tropies. Diba? Ang question, ilang units yung mag-produce ko for 50 machine hours? E ang na-incur mo na machine hours per machine is 0.5. So, yung 50 machine hours, i-divide ko ng 0.5. So, 50 divided by 0.5. So, meron na kung 100 units for tropies. Kaya 100 units, imumultiply ko ng 7, di 700. This is 700. So 1,200 plus 700. So this will give me 1,900 pesos. Na total contribution margin. 
uh, hindi na masama. Hindi ko nga lang na-achieve yung 2,400 kalina kasi may market limitations. But I can still uh, produce 1.9. Kasi imagine, kung tropis lang gagawin mo, 1.4 lang. Pero dahil nakapag-produce ka ng plucky, 1.9 yung magiging total uh, profit natin. Or total contribution margin natin. Assuming we have a market limitations of only 100, uh, 200 units for plucky. Sabihan nyo kapag may tanong plus ah. Last problem, number 47. Ano natin tayo Sabi niya, supposing that the maximum number of plug that can be sold each period is 300 plug however, due to a purchase contracts, tropis required to be sold every period is around 50 tropis. So, <clears throat> ang maximum daw is 300 plug So, kapag 300, ano number ito? Uh, 47. So, kapag 300 plug uh, ilan to? Or 300 units times 0.25. Ganun natin eh. 300 times 0.25. So, that will give me 75 uh, machine hours. <coughs> machine hours, sorry. <coughs> 75 machine hours. However, daw, Tropis required to be sold every period is 50 tropis. Siyempre, priori natin ito kasi required to be sold, eh, 50. So, yung 50 tropis, i-multiply ko ng 0.5. 50 times 0.5. This is 25. O, oh, di sakto lang pala. 25 machine hours. Uh, para maging 100 machine hours tayo. So, sakto lang. So, 300 na plakis and 50 na tropis ang ibibenta natin. What will be the maximum profit that can be earned given the said constraints? So, ayan. Pwede ako mag-base dito, di ba? Pareho lang. So, 75, ita times ko na 24. And itong 25, ita times ko na 14. Yeah. So 75 times 24. This will be 1 8. And 25 times 14. This is 350. So ang total nito 1 8 plus 350. So meron na kung 2150 na profit. So kung ayaw mo niyan, pwede ka namang mag-base dito sa 300. I-multiply ko ng 6 yata yun. Ayan. 6. So, 300 times 6. So, 1.8 pa din. Ayan. Tapos, 50 times 7. This is 3.50 pa din. So, pareho lang makakumpit natin. 2.150. So, yan yung magiging profit natin. Assuming... Uh, we're going to sell 300 plakis and 50 tropis. So, for limited resources, ang gagawin lang natin is to compute for uh, contribution margin per limited resources. So, that... Oh, sige, question. Hmm. Sige, question. <clears throat> Pwede magsalita. Para mabilis. Hello, sir. Sige, managulit ako. Hello Sige. po. Yes. Ano yung tanong? Sorry po. Pag hindi po sakto uh, yung sa machine hours, let's say 60 trophies po yung required. So, ulitin mo? Paano kapag? Kapag po kasi ano, hmm. nagsakto po siya na doon sa 300 Ayaw, case po ay 75 po trophies po na required ay 60 po yung required. Ah, pag 60. Ah, okay. Hindi, ang gagawin natin pag ganun, halimbawa, di ba ito dapat 60 yan eh. Ang mag-a-adjust itong 300 kasi required yung 50. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Ah, so babawasan na lang po yung 300. Oo. So, ibig sabihin kung 60 yung trophies natin, di ba? Halimbawa dito. Kung 60 yung trophies ko, Kaya kinukumpit ko kalina ko ilang machine hours eh para ma-check ko kung papasok dito sa 100. Kung 60 yan, 
Kasi sabi niya required. E di dapat minimum na trophies, 60 units. So kung 0.5, yung machine hours niya, e di ano yan, 30. Tama ba? 60 times 0.5. Pag-accountan talaga, yan lang, na calculator pa. So this is 30 machine hours. E 100 lang tayo. 100 machine hours lang. So ibig sabihin, meron lang tayong 70 para dun kay Plucky. Sabihin. So mag adjust si uh, Plucky. Kasi ang sabi lang naman niya, can be sold. Hindi naman niya sinabi na required din yung uh, 300 eh, na ibenta natin. Ang required dito, yung trophies. Siguro, kaya yan required, baka meron tayong contract na we need to supply a 50 uh, 50 units of trophies. So syempre, mag adjust diyan yung plucky natin. Unfortunately, kasi pumasok tayo sa contract, babawasan natin yung uh, 300 plucks. Kung 60 yung trophies na required ibenta. Ayun, yun yung sagot ko. Sige. Oh. Question pa. Question pa class. Lahat ng tanong? Okay, o sige. Kung may maisip pa kayong tanong, chat lang kayo. And I think we can conclude our discussion for relevant costing. So you still have one day. Kasi diba sabi ko kanina, ay sabi ko pala kahapon, so our quiz will be on Friday na. Diba? So meron kayong one day uh, to study or to solve more problems. So in case meron kayong ma-encounter na kakaibang problem, hindi nyo ma-solve. So, just let me know na lang. Ha? Ano? Ano pa din? 2 to 4 pa din tayo. So, since di ako nakapag-provide ng... Stop muna ako. Stop muna ako ng recording.